Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. FAA works with Florida drone operators. IKO backs global drone registry. And California, no pot delivery by drone. Hi, I'm Brie Cross. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI. Airborne, primarily based in Jacksonville, Florida, is starting to recover from Hurricane Irma, and we can thank the unmanned community for much of that. After the widespread devastation Hurricane Irma wreaked on Florida, unmanned aircraft have been invaluable in supporting response and recovery efforts here. A wide variety of agencies sought FAA authorization to fly drones in the affected areas. The FAA responded quickly, issuing a total well over 100 airspace authorizations. The Air National Guard used drones for aerial surveys, allowing them to assess stricken areas quickly. Similarly, Customs and Border Protection sent drones to help map areas in Key West, Miami, and Jacksonville, using radar to survey geographic points on infrastructure. The private sector is active as well. Airbus Aerial is helping insurance companies act more quickly on homeowner claims. The company is combining data from drones, manned aircraft, and satellite data to give a clearer overall image of specific locations before and after an incident. Irma left approximately 6 million Floridians without electric power as temperatures remained in the mid-80s, so bringing the power grid back up was critical. In northern Florida, Jacksonville Electric Authority used drones to assist not only with power restoration, but also to ensure crew safety. Needless to say, these were shining moments for unmanned technology. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. When it comes to long-term funding for the FAA, the only thing that is certain is that the current continuing resolution expires on September 30th. Beyond that, there appears to be only conflict and stubbornness on Capitol Hill. Media reports that Bill Schuster does not have the votes to pass H.R. 2997 in the full House of Representatives. And the sticking point is a controversial plan to spin ATC off from the FAA. More info to follow. John Hopkins researchers have set a new delivery distance record for medical drones, successfully transporting human blood samples across 161 miles of Arizona desert. Throughout the three-hour flight, the onboard payload system maintained temperature control, ensuring the samples were viable for laboratory analysis after landing. The achievement adds to evidence that unmanned aircraft can be an effective, safe, and timely way to quickly transport medical samples from remote sites to laboratories. The Marine Corps has started equipping infantry units with small UAS quadcopters to bring greater situational awareness to troops on the ground. During last year's Modern Day Marine Expo held at Quantico, Virginia, Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Robert Neller, announced the desire to equip every infantry squad with quadcopters to help them execute missions. Lockheed Martin has unveiled a new small UAS. Their Outrider is a lightweight, canister-launched UAS. At only 4 inches wide and weighing only 1.7 kilograms, it is designed to be used in environments where conventional, larger unmanned air systems are not practical. Despite its size, Outrider can travel up to 50 knots and boasts exceptional payload capacity. Atlas Dynamics has introduced its new fixed-wing UAV, the Atlas Blue Jay. The vehicle features an 11.4-foot wingspan, 4-6 to six hours of flight time, and an 81 nautical mile operational range. Suited for large range security and inspection missions, the fixed-wing UAV can be operated in autonomous and semi-autonomous modes, including takeoff and landing. Made fully of carbon fiber, the Atlas Blue Jay weighs 24 pounds and can carry up to a 20-pound payload. That was our Unmanned Minute, now back to the rest of the news. This could get ugly. The IKO is backing an effort to create a single global drone registry with the goal of adoption of common rules for flying and tracking UAVs. The idea will be discussed at a symposium planned for September 22nd through the 23rd in Montreal. Stephen Creamer, Director of IKO's Air Navigation Bureau, 
said that the single database would become a one-stop shop to remotely identify and track drones and their operators. The IKO could become the operator of such a database. However, it is likely that users would balk at such a registry. The FAA's database was successfully challenged by a drone user earlier this year, and it was deemed to be illegal under current FAA regulations. The symposium will also cover issues such as geofencing, which is designed to prevent drones from flying in areas where they are restricted or prohibited. Kramer said that drone manufacturers are concerned that there will be a patchwork of standards in different countries and they will have to make their products comply with multiple sets of regulations. This is so California. The California Bureau of Cannabis Control has shot down the idea of delivering pot using drones in the state. The Bureau released an initial study that outlined emergency regulations being formulated ahead of January 1st when the sale of marijuana will be allowed with proper retail licensing for recreational use. But the Bureau was very clear that only trailers or commercial vehicles can be used. Quote, transportation may not be done by aircraft, watercraft, rail, drones, human-powered vehicles, or unmanned vehicles, the Bureau said in its study release. FAA spokesman Ian Greger told the paper that the agency is, quote, not aware of any consultations that took place between the California Bureau of Cannabis Control and the FAA. The Bureau will allow home delivery, but only by commercial vehicles. The delivery person may not carry more than a specified amount of the product at any time, and it must not be in clear view from outside the vehicle. Employees must also log their deliveries and will be tracked by GPS. And according to the study, quote, delivery employees may not consume cannabis during delivery. The bottom line is that there will not be pot drones buzzing over California to make deliveries to users' homes. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.